How's it going everybody? Welcome back to the channel. We've done it again guys, we hit another milestone. 13,000 subscribers. Thank you all so much for being here on the channel and watching these silly what ifs of mine. It really does mean a lot to me. To celebrate this achievement, we're heading into a new scenario today, which is going to cover what if Frieza stayed on Earth after a tournament of power. Before we begin, I'd like to give a huge shout out to all my patrons who really help support this channel and make my life a lot easier. If you want to support this channel and get a whole lot of special perks, then make sure you click the link in the description down below to become a patron. It would mean so much. With all of that, I bet you guys are wondering how and why Frieza would decide to stay on Earth, especially this late in the story. Why would Frieza turn over a new leaf? Well, this story isn't called What If Frieza Turned Good, so he's not exactly going to be happy staying on Earth. During the events of the Tournament of Power, Frieza showed off how useful he was by helping to save the universe especially teaming up with Goku at the very end to put an end to Universe 11 strongest. Frieza showed his worth, though everybody knows that he still isn't a good guy. He's not going to completely become a good guy in just 45 minutes of helping save the universe, and the remaining Z Fighters know this. Goku already promised to revive Frieza after the tournament ended, but even that was too much of a nice thing. Frieza was revived by Whis for all of his help, but Vegeta says that that's it. He can be revived, but he's not going anywhere. He won't kill him, but he's not going to let him leave the planet and restart his army, as that won't do any good for anybody in the universe. Instead, he's going to have to stay here, where they can keep an eye on him. Frieza thinks that's a ridiculous idea, and says he's not going to be staying on this pitiful rock. He turns to Beerus and Whis, saying that they need to return him to his empire, but Beerus actually sides with Vegeta on this one. He tells Frieza to watch his tone, as his niceness only goes so far. He already gave him his life back, and he's not getting anything else from him with that attitude. Frieza is getting more worried and angry, about to lash out, but Beerus sticks his hand up to Frieza's face as a purple energy begins to shine. Beerus says that Frieza will be staying on this planet, and if he acts up in any way, or even blows up the planet again, he will destroy him completely with no hopes of resurrection. Frieza sweats a little, and at first is going to say that he's never blown up this planet before, but decides to hold his tongue and just accept his fate. Beerus puts his hand down and says with that out of the way, it's feast time. The group celebrate winning the tournament, and Frieza just angrily sits in the corner sipping on his wine, annoyed that he might have to spend the rest of his days stuck on this planet. Maybe if he does some good in their eyes, they'll actually let him go off again and start his life over. That's highly unlikely with Vegeta around though. He can't even kill him, since if he acts up at all, Beerus is going to destroy him. Well, he just has to look on the bright side. No more stupid parades and happy singing to him constantly anymore. Of course, these kids running around isn't making his life any easier, and that baby, it keeps staring at him. Never mind, this is miserable. Goku tries to get Frieza to join in on the festivities, but Frieza just punches him in the gut again, saying he's fine just sipping on his rosé alone. After the party, the group wonders what they're going to do with Frieza now, as they can't just let him go on his own, as he's far too dangerous. Vegeta knows he's not going to be staying at Capsule Corp, as if he has to share a home with Frieza, he's going to either kill him or himself. Goku is fine with Frieza staying near his place though, as long as he can help him out with his farming. With him helping out, then he can finish much faster and get back to his training much sooner. Frieza really doesn't want to become a farmer, but he can easily use the telekinesis to finish a job as quick as possible. Frieza would travel near Goku's house and build his own little home to stay at during the day, and wonder what he should do with the remainder of his life. He doesn't get to just stay by himself, as Goku drags him out of the house every day so they can get their job done with farming. And of course, Goku and Frieza bicker with each other and get into fights every day. Not too big of fights though, since he knows that he's not going to be able to win. Of course, Goku and Frieza do some sparring whenever Goku gets really fired up. And this is a good way for Frieza to let out some of his anger. He doesn't like when he gets struck, but it's nice to get some good hits on the man who ruined his life. Vegeta comes around every so often as well to check up on Frieza, and make sure he doesn't get too powerful with training. Especially since Frieza could apparently reach the level of gods in only 4 months, so if he had as hardcore training as he did before, who knows how strong you'd get. The three train together, and Frieza tries to be as formal as possible, tempting to get on the Saiyan's good side. Goku and Vegeta still don't exactly trust Frieza, but at least now he's not infuriating to be around, as as far as they know, he's not plotting any evil scheme. And they're actually right in their judgement. Frieza's only real plan as of now is to get on the Saiyan's good side and hope for the best until just let him leave the planet. He could try and sneak into Capsule Corp to get the Dragon Radar, or even a ship to escape, but he knows that Vegeta and his kid are always there, so he won't be able to get very far. He just needs to keep putting up a training with these two monkeys. Frieza's presence also affects the other Z Fighters as well, since they know that there's a constant danger on the planet now. 
Sure, Goku and Vegeta are here to keep him in check, but what happens if they need to go off-world? Frieza can't be left by himself, so they need to be strong enough to keep him contained just in case. Gohan trains pretty hard with Piccolo, as he is very worried about Frieza rebelling against them, so he wants to try his hardest to be prepared just in case anything goes wrong. Frieza's army out in space, they don't know that he was brought back to life, and they just keep on trying to hang in there keeping their business going. Though without Frieza, they really don't have any guidance or any new recruits coming in, since it's a dying force. I feel like they would have a few soldiers going out and trying to collect new recruits, but even those guys wouldn't probably come back. I don't think anybody would find Broly and Paragus on Vampa, unfortunately, too. Meaning the Broly movie sadly never occurs. Saves Frieza from a serious ass whooping, though. Frieza is adapting to life as a human more and more as the days go by. And real quick shout out to my amazing artist Sharpie.82 for making this hilarious drawing of Frieza in a turtle gi. I absolutely love how this looks and I have Instagram in the description down below, so you guys can check out more of his amazing work. Of course, Frieza's time peacefully in this planet isn't one that's going to last forever though, as Goku and Vegeta get a call from Mr. Satan that there are strange men trying to steal away Boo. The two Saiyans want to go over and check it out, but are concerned about leaving Frieza alone for a long period of time. Frieza says he can go and deal with this threat himself if they're really so concerned, and that he'll try his hardest not to kill anybody. He wants to see who would be so bold as to kidnap the dreaded Majin Buu. Well, Goku and Vegeta realize that they can monitor the Emperor easily if he's around them. So the three quickly make their way to Herculopolis, where they find Mirus and the other Galactic Patrol members. Goku, to Frieza's surprise, begins to attack the soldiers, which is odd since he could have sworn that they were working with the Galactic Patrolman when he came to Earth not too long ago. Goku and Vegeta are quickly incapacitated by Mirus, and he looks over to Frieza, glaring at him. He obviously knows who he is and says that the patrol has been looking for him for many years now, and he belongs in their custody. Before he takes him out, he has to ask, what is he doing on Earth? Frieza decides to play dumb by saying that these Saiyans revived him and taught him how to be a good guy, and that he wants to do everything in his power to help these Galactic Patrolmen. Yeah, Mirus doesn't buy that one one bit, and he just sits behind Frieza and knock him out as well. When the group eventually come to, Frieza's disgusted to find that he is stuck in a Galactic Patrol prisoner uniform, and demands to know why they put this idiotic clothing on him. Mirus tells Frieza to calm down, and that after this whole Moro ordeal is finished, he's going to head off to the Galactic Prison. Goku tells Mirus to slow down, as sure, Frieza is still a bad guy, but as of late, he hasn't done anything evil, and is showing more signs of changing for the better. Plus, his revival is a gift from his universe's god of destruction and angel, and he doesn't know if they'd like it very much if they found out he is off of Earth. Mirus is kinda surprised to hear about Whis, and he doesn't want to get in any more trouble with him, so he decides that they'll return Frieza to Earth after the mission to get more is complete. The Moro situation is explained, and Frieza isn't interested at all, and just wants to get this stupid getup off of him. But these Blasted Patrol members aren't letting him even move his hands. When the Margareti gang is doing their business, they can't just leave Frieza alone at the Weaker Patrolman, as he'll most likely kill everybody and escape if need be. So, somebody needs to stay behind and watch him. Vegeta says that Goku should be the one to stay behind, as he wants to really see what Mirus is capable of. Goku really doesn't want to, as he wants to see what Mirus can do. But he promised he would look after Frieza, so he stays behind. Goku gets some good jabs at Frieza for that outfit, and Frieza snaps back that Goku is practically wearing the same thing, just with some added blue. The two begin to bicker more, and they change their conversation to that of Majin Buu. Frieza's never actually seen him before, and is surprised that this is the guy who his father warned him never to go up against. He's just a fat, disgusting blob who sleeps all the time. Doesn't seem like much of a threat to him. Goku says that as of right now he isn't, but a couple of years ago he was a being of pure evil who could absorb others and grow even more powerful. With his absorption, even he and Vegeta couldn't do anything against him, and they had to fuse to take him on. Frieza is fascinated by the idea of absorbing one's power to boost your own, and makes a mental note of that one. Vegeta and the others return and begin their tracking of Moro, and eventually realize that he is going to Namek. Frieza wonders how the hell Namek is still around, as he knows that he blew it up well over a decade ago. They must have used those blasted Dragon Balls to restore the planet and everybody on it. Well, that's another good mental note for the future, as there's now an easier set of Dragon Balls for him to acquire. Goku and Vegeta need to get to Namek now, and are very reluctant to take Frieza with them. Especially to Namek of all places, but they can't just leave him with Mirus, as he doesn't know how dangerous he is. Reluctantly, Goku tells Frieza to grab onto him as well, and they teleport to Namek. Once on Namek, every single Namekian has a panic attack once they lay their eyes on Frieza. Frieza just stares and laughs at them, saying not to worry, he's not here by choice, and they'll all get to live another day. Mori asks Goku what he's doing bringing somebody like Frieza here, and how is he still alive in the first place? 
Goku tells the Elder to calm himself, as Frieza's only here to help out, and look at the way he's dressed, he's their prisoner now. He's going to make sure they doesn't kill another Namekian ever again. Mori still doesn't feel comfortable at all, as he remembers what Frieza did to him. His children, his planet, it's too much. The Namekians say that they can't help Goku as long as Frieza's around, even if he has good intentions. As Goku tries to reason with Mori, a ship lands right next to the village, and Moro walks out, scanning the area. Frieza looks Moro up and down, and to be honest, he is expecting more. Let's see what this goat magician can do. Moro has arrived on Namek and is met with our little group. Frieza thinks it's hilarious that this old-ass goat man is such a threat to everybody, and that he bets he can kill him with one finger. Vegeta is getting pretty tired of Frieza, so he blasts off his galactic prisoner garb and tells him to have at it. Frieza was just bluffing and really doesn't want to fight this guy, but Goku and Vegeta egg him on into doing it, so he has no choice. Frieza tries to end it quickly with a death beam, but Moro uses his magic to deflect it right back at him. Frieza dodges and rushes Moro, but he can't land a hit since Moro is just lifting the ground up to block him. Frieza's getting pretty angry at the goat man making a fool of him, and it's not helping that the monkeys and the slugs are laughing from behind. Frieza erupts into his golden form and launches all he has at Moro. This time, Moro isn't able to simply hold this attack back, and is blown away, getting ready to give it his all this time. Though, since Frieza's going all out from the start, Moro's having a rough time reading him and fighting back. Frieza seems to have this fight in the bag, as he's absolutely destroying Moro. Though suddenly, Frieza loses the golden form. Frieza wonders what's going on, and Goku yells at him to get out of there since something is wrong. Frieza, of course, doesn't listen and keeps trying to fight Moro, but then he reverts back into his third form as well. Frieza is pretty worried now and then gets knocked away by Moro, and kicked back into his first form. Moro reveals that over the course of this fight, he's been stealing energy from all of them to use himself. Goku and Vegeta try to go against him as well, but they can't even use their Super Saiyan 1 form, and are easily beaten by Moro. This time, since Frieza is super powerful as well, Moro gains a whole lot more power when he takes their energies, and can go and find the Dragon Balls much faster. The Namekians go and take Goku and Vegeta to be healed, and while the Namekians aren't ones to take revenge, they can't bring themselves to heal Frieza, so they just leave him there to die. Luckily though, if you know Frieza, he's not gonna die that easily, so he just sits there basically dying for three days while Moro hunts the Dragon Balls. Once Goku and Vegeta come too, they try to hold off Moro, but luckily Mirus and the others arrive to help. Majin Buu was sent down to recover Frieza, and since Buu has his healing abilities, he's able to heal Frieza back up to full levels. Once awoken, Frieza's disgusted that the old goat beat him down so bad, and that this blob had to be the one to save him. Though, this blob could be used to his benefit. Frieza begins to talk to Boo about matters they discussed on the ship, and if the two of them work together, then maybe they can beat this guy. As Mirus tries to hold off Moro the best he can, a gigantic power is felt a ways away. Goku and Vegeta are both blown away by this power, and suddenly the figure zooms past them and punches Moro thousands of feet away. The two are shocked to see what has just happened, or even more shocked to see who it is. It's... Boo. But he kinda looks like Frieza? That's right, Boo has absorbed Frieza. Though Frieza is able to convince Boo to keep him conscious inside him. That way, he can control the fight and the body, since he's the better fighter between the two. With Boo, basically as the host body, but Frieza pulling the strings, this is a new fighter you don't want to mess with. Moro still tries, however, and him and this new Frieza fight it out. Frieza is able to easily beat down on Moro terribly, worse than the beating he got from Fat Boo and Ganon. Frieza is very brutal in how he fights, so he's making sure to really let Moro feel the pain that he caused him. Moro is basically on death's door now, and Goku and Vegeta are starting to get kinda concerned how terribly Moro is being brutalized. They don't have time to keep up that concern though, as the sky suddenly goes dark, meaning that Purunga has been summoned. Moro's full magic is restored as normal, and he flies off to go meet with Cranberry. Frieza isn't going to let that happen though, and flies off after him. Once Cranberry is killed and Moro goes to make his wish, Frieza blasts at him, forcing him to dodge out of the way. Frieza looks at Purunga and realizes now is his chance to get what he's wanted from the very beginning. He sprouts a clone of himself to hold off Moro as he grabs the translator and wishes for himself to have immortality. The wish is granted, and now Frieza has achieved immortality after all of these years. Moro yells out as Frieza has just stolen his wish. But even with his full magic regained, Frieza's power is greater than his due to Majin Buu, and the two continue their fight. Frieza is getting cocky, and allowing Moro to deal damage as he can just regenerate and continue fighting. Frieza and Moro are clashing hard. Though, since Frieza is in Buu's body, his absorption of energy isn't gonna work here, and without any more of the prisoners showing up, Moro is definitely on the losing side of this one. 
Goku and Vegeta eventually make it to their location, and see Moro still on the losing side of the battle. They're weakened from their fight with him before, so they're basically just forced to watch on now as Frieza takes his one for himself. Eventually, Moro is finally down, and Frieza has had enough of his meddling. Frieza launches a giant key blast to erase Moro from existence. The threat of Moro is no more. The Galactic Patrol begins to celebrate as Goku tells Frieza he did a good job, but now to leave Boo's body and to go back to Earth. Frieza laughs and says he doesn't think he'll be doing that. Now, he finally is immortality, has the perfect fighting body, and can take control of the Frieza Empire once more. Goku tells him he's not playing around and to leave Boo's body now. Thankfully, Moro's energy absorption isn't a factor anymore, but Goku is still weakened, so all he can threaten Frieza with now is his original Super Saiyan form. Frieza laughs at Goku and flicks him down to the ground. Vegeta transforms as well to go against Frieza, but he easily meets the same fate. Frieza thanks to Monkeys for their help in getting him this brand new power-up, so he's not gonna kill them right away. He's going to play with his food for now, and wait for them to come and try to stop him again. He'd love to see them try. Frieza laughs maniacally and flies away from Namek off to regain control of the Frieza Empire. Goku curses himself for letting Frieza go off like that, and Vegeta curses him too for bringing Frieza off-world with him. Now, they gotta answer to Beerus. The Galactic Patrol takes a two off of Namek as they decide what they're gonna do now. Moro is dead, but now they have an even worse threat with Frieza. What shall they do? Vegeta tells them he has a plan of his own and he's gonna go his own way in stopping Frieza, and he thinks he knows how. He'll do it away from Goku though. Vegeta heads off straight towards Jarrett like in canon, well, Goku decides to stay behind and master Ultra Instinct with Mirus, since that seems like it can be the only power to defeat Frieza now. As the two Saiyans begin their training, Frieza regains control of his army, and begins to flood countless planets with his soldiers, saying that it's good to be back. Frieza has regained control of his empire. After months of being trapped on Earth by the Saiyans, he's finally free and able to do what he wants in the galaxy. Thankfully, he is now in Boo's body and immortal, so if Beerus ever tries to erase him, that'll be impossible, as he knows Beerus can't destroy immortals. After taking over the Empire once again, he sends out countless troops to get new recruits, as he's pretty sure Goku and Vegeta will try and find him eventually. He could head back to Earth now and destroy it, though he knows that didn't go too well last time, and if Goku is able to use that Ultra Instinct once again, then he'll be screwed. He's gotta train some more in Boo's body, but who else around here is gonna help him train after all this power he's got? Thankfully, two soldiers named Chi Lai and Lemo arrive on his ship to give him this very challenger, the Saiyan Broly. Frieza thinks it's pretty convenient that he got somebody as strong as Broly to help him train, and he breaks the collar around his neck, that way Paragus can't ruin their training. Broly isn't much of a fighter, but he has raw power on his side, so he's able to give a good match to Frieza in their training, which Frieza knows will boost both of their strengths enough to finally be able to take on those Saiyans once and for all. Meanwhile, Goku and Vegeta have been training to take on Frieza as well, Goku has been training with Mirus to once again gain access to Ultra Instinct. They manage to find a hyperbolic time chamber out in space where they've been training, while Vegeta has been off on Yardrat attempting to master Force Spirit Vision. They've been making some good progress, but haven't been the only ones training. Gohan has been training ever since Frieza returned to Earth after the Tournament of Power, since he knew that Frieza would definitely pull something like this. He wants to protect his family, so he's been training pretty hard with Piccolo. Unlike in the Moro arc, there really isn't a time limit for when they need to go and fight Frieza, since they don't need to worry about the galactic prisoners killing them or anything. As far as they're concerned, the only threat they need to worry about is Frieza. Eventually, Mirus is forced to return to the Angels by Whis, leaving Goku alone on the planet. He is somehow able to pilot the ship back home and instant transmissions to Gohan's location so they can come up with a plan to find Frieza. Vegeta's not finished with his training on Yardrat yet, but Goku is pretty sure that he can take Frieza the way he is now. Gohan tells him to wait though, as he has an idea on how to separate Boo and Frieza. Frieza and Broly have continued their training for these past few months, with the two gaining incredible strength. Broly has gotten a hold of his wrathful form and is able to use it at will now, which helps improve Frieza's powers as well. As they are training, Goku, Gohan, Piccolo, and Mr. Satan appear right in front of them. They use the Dragon Balls to teleport to their location, and Gohan's gonna try his best to separate Boo and Frieza. He holds out Mr. Satan in front of Frieza and tells him to just try and attack them. 
Frieza has no idea why the hell Gohan is attempting to sacrifice a human to him, but hey, if we kill for him, he guesses. Frieza goes to fire a death beam at Mr. Satan, though he finds he's not able to for some reason. He tries once again, but the blast just doesn't come. He wonders what the hell is going on, with his body beginning to tremble. Oh god, he thinks. Not now. Why now? The boo inside of Frieza isn't going to let him harm Mr. Satan, and forces Frieza right out of him. Frieza goes flying out of Boo and right into Goku's fist, and is sent flying into the other room. Broly erupts into his wrathful form, attacking Goku for his blow against Frieza. Goku is shocked to see what seems to be another Saiyan here, and is even more shocked after seeing how powerful he is. Goku and Broly begin to battle it out, as Gohan and Piccolo stand in Frieza's way, saying they're gonna take him down. Frieza bursts into his golden form, saying that he'll defeat the two of them, even without the powers of Majin Buu. The three begin their fight, with Gohan and Piccolo giving it everything they have. As the three battle, it's clear that Frieza has become much more powerful with all of his training, and is able to exceed the two of them. Of course, they're not gonna go down without a fight, but they're still not happy with how this is turning out. Goku has had to go into his Super Saiyan God form to even keep up with Broly, and is encouraging him the whole fight how impressed he is. He's only been training under Frieza and has gotten this strong? That's awesome! Broly isn't one for conversation during a fight, and continues to wail on Goku some more, pushing him into Super Saiyan Blue. Goku is really enjoying his fight with Broly, but knows that he shouldn't be wasting his time having a fight with him, as he sees that Gohan and Piccolo aren't doing so hot against Frieza. As much as he wants to keep fighting Broly, his friends are more important. Goku instantly powers up into his Ultra Instinct Omen power, and basically one-shots Broly with this massive increase in power. Broly is shocked at how much damage Goku dealt with just one blow, and tries to go back into fight. With Goku knocking him out of his wrathful form and consciousness in just one more blow. Goku then appears right in front of Frieza and decks him right in the face, sending him flying once again. Goku and Piccolo thank Goku for stepping in again, with him telling them they did a good job and to just stand down for now. He's got this. Goku and Frieza step up to each other once more, with Goku saying that if he just comes back to Earth with them, then they can train together every day and he won't be forced to have to end him. Frieza says that Earth was even worse than hell for him, and he's going to stay up here conquering planets for the rest of eternity, as with his immortality, Goku has no chance of beating him. Goku smiles, asking if they should test that. The two begin their clash once more, shaking the ship that they're on and forcing the Frieza soldiers inside to blast out since they don't want to die. The ship can't handle the clashing of titans and explodes around them, forcing Goku to summon a force field around himself so he can breathe in space. Boo managed to save the others by absorbing them inside himself, though since they went in willingly and are just hanging around inside him, he's not going to change at all. Goku and Frieza continue their fight, with Frieza having a hard time hitting Goku due to his Ultra Instinct relying on dodging more than anything. He's pissed, since he knows that he wasn't ready yet to fight Ultra Instinct, but of course they came to him this time before he could go to them. He managed to increase his strength pretty well through Broly, but since he had Boo separated from him, most of the power he increased was gone. So no Black Frieza for him in this arc. Goku grabs onto Frieza and instant transmissions him over to Beerus' planet, where he throws him on the ground, and throws out a jar he got from Master Roshi. Goku then screams out, Mafuba. Frieza is caught in the green energy, screaming out as he recognizes his technique from the Tournament of Power. Goku said death probably would have been a better end for him, so it's a shame that he went back to his old ways and decided to wish for immortality again, as he didn't want to have to resort to this. He tried his hardest to have him turn good, but it seems that a guy like Frieza can just never be a truly good person, no matter how many chances he gives him. So now, he's done trying to help him. Frieza screams out as Goku seals him away with the Mafuba, ending the reign of Frieza for good. Beerus and Whis come over to see Goku, with him apologizing to Beerus saying that he had no choice but to seal Frieza away, as he would have destroyed the Earth again if he didn't do anything. Beerus takes the bottle away from Goku, and gives it to Whis so he can trap it within his staff. It's Frieza's own fault. They tried to give him another chance, but no, he decided to waste his like, what, fourth chance at redemption? He'll be sealed up for the rest of his days in Whis' staff. 
So, hopefully, this will show him not to mess with the deal made with the God of Destruction. Vegeta then appears next to Goku, finally finishes Yard Rat training and ready to take on Frieza. But, in typical Dragon Ball fashion, Goku cucked Vegeta by taking a W for himself. And Vegeta just got wasted once again. <laughs> F's into chat for Vegeta. The group all return to Earth, and with Frieza gone, the group can finally breathe a little easier. Though, they have new guests on Earth now, Broly and Paragus, who Boo managed to save when they were in the ship. Broly isn't a bad guy, and was just used by Frieza as a training tool, so obviously Goku and Vegeta aren't gonna try to kill him, but help him realize his full potential under them. So, they take Broly in under their wing, and teach him everything that they know about fighting. The real way, not the Frieza beating the crap out of you way. With Frieza gone, the rest of the series would kinda line up with canon for the most part, with only a few differences. For one, Goku never managed to master Ultra Instinct during the Moro arc, since Mirus never had to sacrifice himself. Though, since this is Goku we're talking about, he definitely would be able to get it eventually, especially since he can now train with both Whis and Mirus to get the form, as Mirus is still an angel. As for Granola and the Heaters, Granola wouldn't find out Frieza is still alive, until the Heaters let him know that he came back for, like, maybe a year, but then was just instantly taken out again. So, with no Frieza to entice Granola to power up, he would continue just being a bounty hunter for the Heaters for now. Which kinda sucks for him, as they're the ones who killed his mom, but maybe one day he could be free of their servitude. As for the events of Dragon Ball Super Superhero, Gohan is much stronger now than he was in the movie, due to him training some more, waiting for Frieza to eventually revolt. So, when the Gammas arrive, Gohan would actually join Piccolo in dealing with them right off the bat. Though, even though he is stronger here, he wouldn't be able to deal with Cell Max on his own, so the canon would pretty much line up once more with the two getting new forms to deal with that threat. And with that, I'm pretty sure we finished up with this scenario. I know a lot of you are probably disappointed that Frieza didn't end up turning good in this series, but again, I highly doubt Frieza would turn good in pretty much 99% of scenarios. He always wants to be better than the Saiyans, and at every turn would betray them the first chance he gets. So, in this timeline, he's stuck inside of Whis's staff for the rest of eternity, as the others get to keep on thriving. I do hope you guys enjoyed this scenario though, on seeing how Frieza would act if he was trapped on Earth, and not stupidly let back into space by the others. If you enjoyed this scenario, make sure to like the video, and subscribe for more videos like this one. Huge shout out to all my amazing patrons helping to make this series possible. We have in the official patron tier, Nathan, BBB, and Bossmaker. In the moving up in the world tier, we have Patrick Sandlin, John Lister, David Monroe, Sinshenron92, Oak Woodry, Ogata Shiba, Monal, Eric Doss, Blake Foyer, Matthew Garcia, Vegito Gaming 78, True Lightning Striker, Speedster 352, Joseph Kelvin Liu, and Semroth. In the VIP patron tier, we have Always Zero and Levin 726. And finally, in the god tier, we have Tony Kage. Thank you especially, Tony Kage. You're an absolute god. And thank all of you so much for watching, and until we meet again. See you later!